when Dark Shadows premiered, there was nothing uh, all that spooky about it. It had a, a nice atmosphere to it, but it was the type of atmosphere that you'd find in the typical Gothic uh, literature of the time and all the Gothic literature that preceded it. It had so much more in common with uh, the Bronte sisters and uh, uh, much more so than, say, uh, Bram Stoker or Mary Shelley or the, the kind of the supernatural uh, things that it eventually got into. And I think what's, what was remarkable about uh, Dark Shadows as, a, as just a, a show business story was that you, when you read the, sort of the history of show business, some of the best things, the most innovative things, happen by accident, or they happen because they're acts of desperation. And uh, Dark Shadows, of course, it was the, that it wasn't successful, is that the show had gone on the air and the ratings were not good. And uh, as Dan has said many, many times, what the heck? Let's make it scary. Let's see if it, that'll work. And it scared up a lot of viewers, as we know. But even at that, the great innovation for me, as far as uh, Dark Shadows is concerned, and why it is sort of a pivotal show, because you can talk about it being a pivotal show in a lot of different ways. For me, personally, one of the things that's most intriguing about uh, Dark Shadows, beyond its, the fact that it became a pop culture phenomenon, is that Dark Shadows goes beyond that. It's the pivotal show as far as all of vampire literature is concerned. This reach is universal. This reach goes right across the board. And this is a, an accident. This is a mistake in a, in a lot of ways. Because Dan, as he has said many times, Barnabas was only going to be a vampire that at the end of the storyline he was going to drive a stake through. And Barnabas was not going to be a vampire very differently than the vampires we had known in literature. The first great vampire story is Dracula. There are vampire stories before it, but everything that comes before Dracula leads to Dracula. 1897, Dracula is published. Dracula as a character is pure predator. Dracula is about an imminent threat invading society. There is no advance on the vampire character for the next 60 years. Nobody advanced the ball. There are great vampire stories, like I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. There are wonderful vampire books. Nobody advanced the vampire character until Barnabas came along. And there again, it wasn't intended originally. It all came out of Jonathan's performance, and that's what really lit Dark Shadows up is because Jonathan, as an actor, had to find a way into the part. And his way was to find that discomfort of a vampire all of a sudden going from one century to another century. And now all of a sudden, as the character started to develop and the fans started to respond to that performance, Dan and the writers decided, let's make him a vampire who's actually fighting against his own nature. That's huge. It was called at the time the, 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 the vampire's Hamlet or some, some, some such thing. But truly, Barnabas is the first vampire who stops and says, questions his nature. He stops and says, do I have to be like this? Can I change? Can I be a better person? Then my nature is to be a predator, but I want to battle against that. That's where Anne Rice goes with her vampires. It's where Joss Whedon goes with Angel. It's where the culture goes. So in essence, Dark Shadows is like this swinging door through which all of vampire literature goes. It changed the whole direction of vampire literature and horror literature. What most people don't realize about the 1960s uh, is how little actual horror there was anywhere, in books, in movies, and in television. There was almost none. And if you were like me, uh, dark, I was 10 years old when Dark Shadows started. And if you were like me, you were desperate for anything that would come along. You were desperate for any supernatural, spooky thing. You didn't have much. You had uh, Twilight Zone, 
You had the Outer Limits in the early 60s. You had an occasional Hammer Horror film. And you, most of what we sort of feasted on as horror fans were the old stuff. Films from the 1950s, the classic universal horror films. And most of what we read were the classics. Most of what we read were uh, Bram Stoker and Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. So there wasn't very much. And when something came along, we pounced on it. Greedily, like a vampire seeing a victim, we went at it. And Dark Shadows came along, and it just ripped through the fandom. If you were a horror fan, all of a sudden there's this vampire loose in daytime. You were watching. You had to be watching. And Dark Shadows, in many ways, kept the horror fit alive. There wasn't much keeping horror alive throughout the, the 1960s. There was a huge horror boom in the 1950s when uh, you had a lot of films like Godzilla and The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You also had writers like Ray Bradbury and Richard Matheson and Robert Block at the height of their game. And in the 60s, there's this, like, this valley. And there's famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. There's The Twilight Zone and there's Dark Shadows. And that almost kept it all going single-handedly. And it's the link to where you get to the 70s. Because when you get to the 70s, there's another horror boom. And by the end of the 70s, Stephen King is a best-selling author. Anne Rice is on the charts. Uh, George Romero is up and running as a filmmaker. John Carpenter is up and running as a filmmaker. You have horror all over the place, and it's dominating the bestseller list. It's uh, big hits in, the, in, in movies. But in the 60s, almost nothing. So this show was very, very important in keeping the whole, again, it's that swinging door that I keep talking about. Dark Shadows is, is, is like that, that, that link. It's not only the link between Dracula and Anne Rice, it's the link between uh, the, the horror boom of the 50s and the horror boom of the 70s. And the innovations that, 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 it, that it brought to it, again, the notion that you have a monster who's fighting against his very nature. We had monsters that, that sort of question their nature. But fighting against their nature, especially a vampire who is supposed to be predator, that was unheard of. And not only was it unheard of, but then it became, you almost couldn't do a vampire story without that being the essence of it. All Anne Rice's characters do is question their nature, endlessly. But Barnabas was the first. And it, yes, the writers recognized it and took advantage of it and did some wonderful things with it. But it was Jonathan's performance that was really where it all came out of. And you can't credit that enough. You just can't give that too much credit.